Hello, drummers and other creatures. To paraphrase the song I'm going to look at in this video, I'm looking northwest London and feeling Aberyst with. We're looking at Outshined by Soundgarden off the album Bad Motorfinger that I was talking about today with one of my friends and colleagues. Um, this is a groove that's in 7-4 time, which is an odd time signature. And I, I can't remember if the odd in odd time is for like three, five, seven odd numbers or odd because it's a bit peculiar. But a lot of hoo has made around grooves with odd time signatures. And actually, it's not that difficult. Once you start getting used to the idea, it's quite straightforward to do. So if you're interested in playing uh, odd time stuff, start here. Now the first thing to think about, seven, four, seven is just a four and a three. And it's quite a good way to think about odd time uh, patterns as groupings of things we're more familiar with. So we know our fours pretty well, we should know our threes pretty well, and so making a seven out of a four and a three makes sense. This song works that way. Now other ways you can arrange a seven would be a two, a two and a three, or a three and a four, there are different ways of arranging it, but this one is a four and a three. And the first part of the bar, the four part, is a very straightforward rock beat. We have the bass on the one, the and of one, the and of two, the three, and the and of four. So we have this. You can play that, right? Very straightforward. That's the four part. The three part is slightly more silly, but again, not that difficult once you isolate it. So we're gonna count one and two and three and. And we have the bass drum on the and of the one, we have the snare on the two, and then we have the bass on the E, uh, sorry, the three and the E of three, and then a snare on the and of three. So maybe that's a little bit more fiddly, but it sounds like this. Oh, I missed it. One and two and three E and. So make sure you work on each section on its own and count. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and. Okay, now the last thing to add to that is the open hi-hat on the and of the seventh quarter note or the and of the, the three, right? So three and, if we're counting in chunk of four and three, it goes like this. Not bad. Now, once you've got the hang of the pattern, once you've got the open hi-hat in there, you can start thinking about the way the hi-hat is accented. Um, the hi-hat accents all the quarter notes, 
And we would also want to sort of play the same shape on the open hi-hat, at least I do. So that means we're going to be playing an accent one and two and three and four and one and two and three and. When I open the hi-hat, I want to be doing the same movement as I do for the accent. Now when I'm playing an accented hi-hat, I'm going to be digging in a little bit to the edge of the hi-hat cymbals with the, um, what's this called, the taper of the, the stick. Okay, to produce my accent. So I'll be going, it's also known as a shank tip, but that sounds slightly rude somehow. But we're going shoulder of the stick or the taper of the stick on the edge of the cymbals for the accent on the numbers on the ands, I'm playing the tip of the stick like this. But on the end of the three, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and, I'm also playing an accent to allow me to get that good open hi-hat sound. I don't really want to play that open hi-hat sound with the tip of the stick. So it's going to be like this. then it allows me to get that good open hi-hat sound. If I do a tip on the open hi-hat sound, it's a little bit thinner, I'm not so keen on it. much nicer. So, the whole pattern with the accents. And there you go. That's your 7-4 groove for Outshined. Once you've got the hang of that, once that's flowing nicely, once you've got it settled nicely in that big, fat, heavy tempo, so that it's a heavy, heavy riff and you want your drumming to sit there nice and solidly, you can start improvising and trying to develop, first of all, maybe some, some fills. And the process here is, is pretty straightforward. For example, you could just add on the third beat of the second part of the bar, just on the, on the last quarter note, play 16th note. So you'd be going three E Anna. That was the thing I was thinking of. So the whole bar sounds Move that around a little bit. And then you can extend that Anna three E Anna. Just throw a dilly um tub in there if you feel so inclined. Um, again, once you've got the, the structure of the thing and you're counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and you can put all your regular vocabulary vocabulary in there. I should be able to say the word vocabulary by now. So that's how you develop some fills there. Sit and practice, 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 play it to yourself over and over again. Make sure you sing that riff in your head once you've got used to the counting. Then all you need to do is start adding a little bit of variation to the bass drum and the snare. If you feel really secure 
in your knowledge of the basic groove that I've explained, then doing some variations on that shouldn't be too tricky if you've had some experience improvising. And I've made some videos to help you get into improvising and the general principles are the same. But let's see, uh, I'll, I'll have a little bit of play and see if I can embarrass myself and try and do some improvising on this. should have spent more time tuning my toms today. Anyway, that about wraps that up. I think I managed to do a fairly quick one today, which is a good sign, hopefully. I'll check. There you go. There's your 7-4 groove. Have a go at that. Let me know how it went. Give me your feedback in the comments as to whether I explained that nice and clearly. Did you manage to get that to the point where you could play the groove along to the song? Have you been able to improvise some fills and improvise a little bit of snare and bass drum embellishments onto that, let me know. Thank you very much for watching this. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you found this entertaining and interesting and informative and so on and so forth. And I think it's time for you to go off and practice.